All right, I want to welcome those joining us by TV, by radio, and by live streaming from wherever you're coming into our service from, from all around the world. If you're listening by radio, you can go to www.theshepherdshouse.net and you can get the entire program. All right, going to be looking at some things in the Old Testament today and preaching some things the Lord laid on my heart. There's a lot of things that uh, people are going through right now, and I want to minister and encourage people uh, that are facing things uh, to keep on the firing line for the Lord. And for those that maybe have messed up, I'm thankful we've got hope through Christ Jesus. Thank God he doesn't throw the clay away. Aren't you glad? Amen. All right, Jeremiah chapter 18. I'm going to read just a few verses. We're going to go back and uh, read some scripture you've already heard this morning in Psalms 51. Jeremiah 18, starting in verse 1, says, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there will I cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel that seemed good to the potter to make it. Psalms chapter 51, verse 1 says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin, did my mother conceive me? Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make to me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then I will teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Let us pray. Father, in the loving name of Jesus, coming before you once again, thanking you, Lord, for your mercy, thanking you, Lord, for your love, asking you, Lord, to bless and to move in this service today. Touch the hearts of all that are here, all that are joining us, Lord, from uh, wherever around the world through the media. I pray, God, that you would move in a mighty way. Uh, Father, in their hearts and in their lives, I pray for those that are lost and undone. And I pray for the Christians, Lord, that feel feels like they've messed up and they've made a mistake and they are, are, are marred. I pray, God, to give them hope and strengthen them this day. And let them feel, Lord, the comfort, Lord, of being able to come back to you, Lord. Not, uh, Father, be cast down and not to be pushed away, but to be received joyfully, Lord, once again into your presence, Lord, as they call upon the name of the Lord and believe in their heart, turn away from the things that they've done that grieve the Holy Spirit Spirit and receive mercy, grace, and forgiveness at an altar of prayer. Father, I pray today, Lord, to minister to those that are broken. Touch those, Lord, that feels like that they're trapped and they have no way out. I pray, God, that you would help them, Lord. I Father, Lord, not to escape, but, Lord, to come to you and allow them, uh, Lord, to receive mercy this day. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and ask all these things this day. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. The title of the message today is Marred, But Then Made New. Marred, But Then 
made new, to be able to really understand what the Scripture is saying. In Jeremiah chapter 18, I'm going to read this one more time. It says, And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it another, again, another vessel that seemed good to the potter to make it. That means he started all over again. Got rid of that, made a brand new one, a man with a brand new start. Looking at the word marred, I looked it up, and this is what it means. The definition of the word marred. See if this might identify with where you're at right now today. Disfigured or disfaced, as by scratches, nicks, scars or discoloration, spoiled, ruined, impaired, disfigured, detract from, flaw, blemish, scar, mutilate, deface, deform, upset, damage, wreck, harm, hurt, blight, taint, tarnish, stain, pollute. Amen, sometimes, amen, we may be doing the best that we think that we can and then all at once to something happens in our life. Any of y'all ever made a bad decision? Any of y'all ever do something that you were sorry of and had to go back and say, oh Lord, I sure did mess up. Lord, I sure got in my flesh and I allowed the flesh to do something that I should not have done. Lord, give me mercy, give me grace. Amen, I'm thankful that we've got a God that does not throw the clay away. Looking back here into Psalms, give God praise. Uh, chapter 51, we see here where uh, that the psalmist David uh, was living for the Lord. Uh, everything going pretty good. And then all it watched, uh, there was Bathsheba. It took a bath upon the roof. Uh, and David saw her. He lusted after her. He sent her husband to the front lines of the battle knowing that he was Uriah, Uriah was going to be killed. Amen. Knowing what the outcome was going to be. Amen. And then they had a son together. And that son died. Oh, David, he mourned and went through a whole lot. Finally, he washed his face and said, I can't bring him back, but I can go to where he is. Amen. And what happened? Amen. David went for a while. Amen. Not thinking about what that he did. It's easy sometimes. Amen. To see other people's sins and not be able to see our own. So finally the Lord sent Nathan the prophet to see David. Amen. And Nathan told him about the little ewe lamb and what they had done. And David's anger, uh, he, oh, it was kindled. He said, let me know who this person is. That person is worthy of death. I'll have him put to death for what he did. And Nathan said, David, it's you. You're the one that did this transgression. You're the one that did this sin. And then David wrote this psalm. Amen. Lord, cleanse me with hyssop. Lord, purge me. Cleanse me. Make me whole. Amen. I'm thankful that we've got an opportunity. Amen. To go back to the potter's wheel. Amen. When something goes wrong. When we mess up. Amen. For some of you that are perfect, that never did make a mistake, you need to pray for the rest of the multitude. Amen, the other, uh, uh, you know, 360 million that there is in America because they're not perfect like you are. But for some of us, uh, amen, that every now and then makes a boo-boo, I'm thankful we can go back to the potter's house. Uh, Y'all try to stay awake on me this morning uh, and help me to preach. Uh, I'm thankful today, uh, amen, we can find grace uh, and mercy. I'm thankful today that the Lord don't look at us uh, when we come to with humility and brokenness uh, and say, Lord, I'm so sorry. Here you can see how that David in Psalms 51 was so sorry for what that he did. He felt so low, no doubt. He probably thought he'd have to have a stepladder to reach the bottom of a snake's belly. Any of y'all ever felt that way? Felt like, Lord, I know if I got what I deserved, you'd have thrown me into hell yesterday. But I'm thankful that you're listening to me. I'm thankful, Lord, I can find help at an altar of prayer. I'm thankful, Lord, I can steal away 
and pray at home. I can go to the altar at the church and I can pray. I can get in the car and drive down the road and I can tell you deep secrets that's in my heart that nobody else knows. Nobody else will ever find out. And I can tell you just how bad that I messed up. I don't have to be embarrassed to talk in front of you because you already know anyhow what I've done. The devil's already come and told you I made a mistake. The devil's already come, my accuser, and, and accused me of doing wrong and failing. Lord, I've not sinned against anybody else in the universe except against you and against your word. It don't matter what somebody else thinks about me. It doesn't matter what anybody else says about me. All that matters, Lord, is that I get forgiveness and I can find mercy. Oh, Lord, if everybody in the country just me and says, well, I'm, you're weak and you're unworthy. It won't make any difference because I can go to the throne of grace. I'm thankful that the Lord is like that. Amen. We can go to him and say, Lord, I'm so embarrassed because of what that I've done. I'm so embarrassed because of the way that I've acted and through the things that I've thought and the things that I've said. I'm so sorry, Lord, and I'm thankful. Amen. Just like David found mercy in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. David was a man that was after God's own heart, but he found him Himself, being taken down, amen, by the spirit of lust. Amen. Some of you may be having other things. It may not be lust where the devil has tried to take you down, and it could be because of lust. Amen. It could be because, amen, of something that uh, you have came across at work, something that you faced with a family member or a friend, amen, that puts you in such a place that caused you to make a bad decision. Amen. Sometimes our decision get us all messed up. Sometimes we can make one wrong decision. Amen. It blows everything up. Amen. I, I said this morning in Sunday school, I, I know there's been times uh, you see a preacher preaching in the pulpit, doing the best job you thought you ever heard anybody do. One week later, his home's busted up uh, and he's out in the world. Uh, amen. That's how quick, uh, amen, God or the devil can take you down, uh, but God will give us mercy. Amen. It don't take, uh, amen, six months to backslide. Uh, it don't take uh, a year to get out of the will of God. Amen. All we got to do is to make a bad decision. Sometimes it may take a while. Amen. For that to come to a head because of the decision that we've made. Amen. We might make it okay. Amen. Through some things. I've seen people that were struggling. Amen. Over things. Amen. They be in church and they get under the spirit of the Lord. Amen. While that power of God was moving in the house of the Lord. Lift up their hands with tears in their eyes. Amen. Shout out the praises of God. And a week later, amen, doing things, amen, that you knew, amen, was an abomination in the eyes of the Lord. But for a few moments in the presence of God, while they were struggling, the Holy Spirit touched their life. Even though they knew they wasn't right with God, they could feel his mercy. They could feel his warm love, amen, overshadow them. And even though in their meekness and in their weakness, and in their uh, time of tribulation, uh, amen, they wasn't doing exactly right. Uh, they felt the presence of God, uh, and they lifted up their hands, uh, and they praised God, uh, but something come to a head. Amen, a day later. Amen, things, amen, because they was embezzling money. Amen, two days later, amen, they get caught. Amen, listen, because they were running around on their wife or husband, two days later, amen, they might get caught. Amen, David was doing good. Amen, everything was lovely. Oh, till he saw Bathsheba. Then he sinned and he done wrong. Went for a space of time. Amen. Even though he was still king. Amen. God gave him grace. Amen. Gave him an opportunity to come to himself. But simply because. Amen. He would not listen. He did not see. Amen. His folly. He did not see where he failed. Amen. It took the man of God coming. Amen. I'm thankful. Amen. David broke down and repented. If David had lived in 2022 he'd have left the church, amen, throw down his Bible and never would have praised God anymore because he'd been too weak to have took it. 
That's where people are out today. Amen. You even suggest that there's a possibility that they're less than perfect. Amen. You'll never see them anymore. If you ever come across anything that hits them wrong, amen. Oh, listen. Amen. That pride. Amen. It'll jerk in here and here they go. Listen, before you can ever get to the potter's house, amen, you fight it. You got to get to the brokenness first. Here the Bible says, amen, that the Lord told Jeremiah, let's go down to the potter's house. I want to show you a work that I've wrought, a work on the wheels. And the word wrought means I have hammered and beat with a hammer. I have stressed and struggled. See, when you put a piece of clay, amen, on the potter's wheel, you first got to get that in some kind of shape other than a clump. Amen, you can't be like you see on some of these TV shows like Gunsmoke. We was watching Gunsmoke last night, and I saw them. They cut down this pole with an ax, and the end of it was sawed off just as straight as can be thought of. Amen, listen, and they laid their ax down. I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I got sense enough to know that ain't how a pole looks when you cut it with the ax. Amen, because I've cut some of them. Amen, sometimes we can pretend. Amen, things are the way, amen, that we'd like for it to be, but they're not that way. Hey, listen, God, amen, knows the heart. He knows the intentions, amen, of the heart. And I'm thankful, amen, the Lord can do a work in us. But that clay, it's oblong. That clay's got all kinds of lumps in it. That clay's got all kinds of imperfections. And when he first throws it up on that uh, table, he don't put water on it to start out with. He does all this, uh, amen, kind of like grandma in the biscuit dough, amen, uh, mashing and uh, beating on that thing. Uh, I see my grandmother make biscuits, and she'd uh, get that in there, and you don't take up a big handful of lard and put it down in, uh, in a, a hole she made in the flour and, and poured some milk in there and put a big old clump of lard in there, and she'd go to pulling just a little bit of that flour in there, and she began to mash it. Uh, Amen. After a while, she'd take it out and throw it there on that biscuit board, that rolling board, or whatever you call the thing. Uh, and she'd hit that thing with her fist. I don't know how many times. Uh, then she'd set it up uh, on its edge and she'd hit it another time or two. Uh, ever seen the Lord? Uh, amen. Have to work on our hard head a few times. Uh, amen. Listen, the preacher can talk to us. Uh, we're not going to understand uh, till we get embarrassed. Uh, amen. And called out in front of everybody. And then we ain't got the guts. Uh, we don't have enough of the Holy Ghost to take it. And we went home. I'm the victim. I've been uh, mistreated and done wrong. I only had a year of instruction and wouldn't listen to it. I can't take it. Amen. I gotta go. I gotta leave. Amen. Praise the Lord. I listen. Sometimes we just can't take it. But if we'll listen like Jeremiah, listen to the Lord. When he said, Let's go down to the potter's house. Let me show you how he wrought a work. He worked hard on that piece of clay. Oh, he done everything that he could. Uh, amen. Listen, the Lord will constantly work on us. Uh, amen. To get some selfishness uh, and some pride out of our life. Uh, the Lord will constantly work on us uh, to get us to pay our tithes. Uh, amen. Listen, and to pray up uh, and to pay up what we've uh, not uh, caught up. Uh, amen. That we owe God. Uh, he'll work on us. Uh, he'll deal with us. Uh, amen. In a mighty way. Uh, oh, and then we won't listen. Uh, amen. The next thing you know, uh, our clay's got messed up. Our clay's done got in trouble. Our clay's done went so far gone. Amen. That you can't never get that mess straightened up. So the Lord says, I'll just take it off the potter's wheel and I'll just give you a brand new start. I'll just clean the slate. I'll just forgive you because you came to me with a humbleness, a humility. You've laid your pride down. You've laid those things at my feet. You've surrendered your life to me. Now you're going to allow me to do it my way instead of doing it your way. Amen. I mean, I've seen some of the things I've done my way and every one of them messed up. But what God done in his way, amen, he has built it He's made something out of it. It's blessed my life. It's blessed the church. It's blessed other people. Amen. But what I done, amen, it was just a lump and had to be pulled out and thrown away. 
Amen. Sometimes the things that you do, amen, even though you've got good intentions, uh, amen, it's a lump that the Lord has to pull out. Uh, amen. Listen and start you all over again. Uh, thank God he didn't throw me away. Uh, amen. Thank God he didn't, uh, amen, uh, do away with me. Uh, but he allowed me to see my faults. Uh, he allowed me to see where I'd done wrong. Uh, he allowed me to get up, uh, amen, and start all over again uh, with a brand new start. Uh, amen. There ain't nothing any better than a brand new start. Uh, amen. To life and a brand new start. Uh, having problems in your marriage and start all over again. Uh, amen. Go back to the day you said I do. Uh, amen. Listen. Find out what it is. Uh, amen. That you need to get worked on. Uh, amen. Something wrong uh, with a relationship. Uh, amen. With a family member. Uh, amen. If you'll go back with humility. Uh, well, Brother Jimmy, I'm not going to admit to being wrong. Uh, amen. When I'm not wrong, I understand that. Uh, but sometimes because they're weak, uh, you have to say, I love you. Hey, man, I've had to do that several times. I can't say I'm sorry because what I said, because what I told you was the truth, and it was there to help you. But I just want you to know that I love you. I just want you to know that I care about you. I just want you to know that your life matters to me. I'm concerned, amen, about what you're going through. Amen, sometimes, amen, all we need to hear from somebody is that I love you and their heart will break because this is what the devil does. I don't know why I'm getting into this. But when there's a, a conflict in a relationship, it could be with a brother or a sister, a mom and dad. It could be with a husband and wife. It could be you know, with a boss or whatever. Sometimes, a man just saying, I love you. Or can I buy you breakfast today? Could I take you to lunch today? It'll change the whole atmosphere. It'll change the whole attitude. Amen. And sometimes it'll cause them, amen, that are wrong to say, you know what? I done you wrong yesterday. I shouldn't have gave you a warning ticket because that was the first time you knew anything about it and you didn't understand. See, love, amen, will hide a multitude of sin. Love will cover up, amen, a whole lot of wrongs. Amen. Love will make altogether the difference. That's what I've had to learn to do as a pastor. Amen. Somebody gets corrected. I, I don't go and kiss them on the cheek. Amen. Make them feel good. I'm glad they feel bad. I hope they feel so rotten they get on their belly and cry out to God. Amen. If I go, amen, I'll preach a message one time. God's little helpers. Amen. Sometimes when somebody gets spanked, people wants in the flesh to go, well, I know what you're going through. I want to help you. Leave them alone. Let God whoop them a while. It's good for them to get spanked, amen, and they can go to an altar somewhere, amen, they can cry out to God, amen, everything don't always have to be perfect, this world is not called Jimmy Wilson's earth, and it's not called your earth, amen, listen, God created this, amen, things is not always going to be the way that I want it to be, I have to go by the word of God, I have to go by what's right, sometimes I want to go and say, let me help you, amen, and the Lord reminds you, you've done tried to help them multitudes of times, let them fall, let them get broken, and let them come back to me, like the prodigal son, sometimes that's hard, especially as a pastor, how many mothers we got in this place? today. Lift your hand up if you're a mama. You almost know how I feel. Almost. Well, Brother Jimmy, I love my kids more than you ever know. I love you that much too. When your kids don't show up for supper, you go out in the yard and holler for them. You ain't been to church this week. Uh, excuse me. You didn't come in for supper. <laughs> Wonder where they're at. Then you wring your hands and you worry, are they all right? And you toss and turn in the bed at night because you know there's something wrong in their family. You know that you're missing too much. Amen. Listen, it don't bother them, but the pastor's hair falls out and then it turns gray. Amen. As he's praying and worrying and talking to the Lord, Lord, where's, where's the Smith family? Where's the Wilson family at? They ain't been here in two weeks. I'm upset. I can't eat. I don't feel right. Oh, God touch them, help them. Did I do something in the flesh that was wrong? What's wrong with them, Lord? Help them, Lord. Amen. You mamas know what it's like over the children. Amen. You're not a pastor, but you're beginning to understand. And some of you parishioners, amen, that are watching by television, don't appreciate your pastor. Amen. Get up, grow up, pray up. Get back into the house of God. And if you've got somebody to preach the truth, appreciate them, man. 
Amen. There's a difference between a pastor and an evangelist. Amen. I love to evangelize, and God won't let me. Amen. I do a little evangelizing. Amen. Every now and then, and I'm always glad to go somewhere and preach. My calling is to pastor, and that's the hardest job other than a president that I can think of. Amen. Amen. You don't think it's hard on a president? Look at President Trump. They just keep attacking that man. Now, I didn't like everything about President Trump. Hey, man, if I got right down to it, I might not like everything about every one of you here today. Every now and then, I don't like some things about me. And I, Lord, I love you straight that hypocrite up. Oh, Lord, that's me. Excuse me. Hey, man, well, Brother Jimmy, you ought to look at yourself that way. I would to God that every one of you, you look at yourself that way. Make it a lot easier on me, amen, having to preach and having to pastor, amen, when you don't care, amen, you're uncommitted. Lord, help me. Whew. If y'all gonna ever get this church off the ground, you're gonna have to find a different pastor, amen, somebody that won't preach. You're gonna find somebody that don't love you because I love you enough, I'm gonna tell you the truth. I love you enough, I'm gonna, amen, get the bush, get you in reaching the bushes and get you, and I'm not gonna come, amen, with a piece of candy kissing you on the cheek. I'm gonna come with a shepherd's rod, get you around the neck and drag you through the briars and get you out of there. That's what the Lord does. Amen. He don't pamper us. Amen. That's what that shepherd's rod's for. He don't kill. He don't cut the bushes down. He reaches in there and gets that thing around that scrawny neck and jerks that sheep out. You want me to tell you what else the shepherd done? He get that sheep out. He break his legs, lay it on his shoulder, and take him home. And said, "You strayed, but." You ain't going to run away no more. You're going to limp for a long time. You're going to have to listen to me now. I won't have to hunt you up. I had to pack you to where I'm going to you heal. And you're going to learn. Hey, man, listen, there's not too many people would take it. Hey, man, listen, Jesus was talking to the disciples. Hey, man, he said, you're going to have to eat my, my flesh. You're going to have to drink of my blood to be a part of me. And many turned and they went away. They said, this is too hard of a saying. We can't do this. Jesus looked to the other disciples and said, will you also go away? And Peter said, Lord, where will we go? To whom will we go to? You're the hope of life. <laughs> you are the Savior. You are the, our Redeemer. You're the only one uh, can get us through this. Lord, who am I going to go to? Uh, there is no one else except you. Uh, when we learn uh, that there's nobody but Jesus, uh, amen, that's going to make a difference in our life. Uh, amen, listen, things will be different in our home. Uh, amen, the preacher won't have to lose hair. And, and, and to her turn gray, wondering about where you're at, you'll send in a report. We okay, Pastor. Don't don't worry about us this week. We'll be back next Sunday. Just had a little something come in. Don't y'all be concerned about us. Why people they lay out two months and then they just don't make no difference. I just showed up. Nobody cared anyhow. Pastor, if you died, then, you know you just died. But if you didn't, it's gonna make you a stronger pastor. Because I heard an old country cliche, what don't kill you make you stronger. And pastor, I'm making you stronger all the time. Amen. Letting you worry over me. Whoo, Lord, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Listen, never seen a time like it today. Amen. Because of our culture. Amen. People today, he's got a mindset. Amen. That everything is owed me. But let me tell you something, folks. Amen. Anything I get from God is because he loves me. He don't owe me anything. I deserved hell, and he gave me grace instead. I reserved stripes on my back, and he took them for me. I was deserved to die many times, amen, before now, and he spared me, amen. He's helped me through everything. He's healed my body, amen. He's healed my family. He's brought me through the fire, amen, through a time of testing. I want you to know when you get down to nothing, you're gonna find out, amen, you wish you had Jesus. Amen, listen, folks, the things of the world's not gonna bring you out of it. Your money, amen, ain't gonna help you when a doctor says you're gonna die, amen, because you ate up with cancer. Sir, amen. It don't matter how many doctors you got. It don't matter how much money you got. Amen. That money ain't going to heal you. That money might bring you some good physicians. But if God don't bless, you're on your way to the funeral home. 
That's all there is to it. Amen. Only God can put marriages and homes back together. Only God can heal our children. Amen. Only God, amen, can put his seal of approval, amen, on everything. Amen. Don't you think for a moment you're not going to go through the fire. I've been through the fire for years, and it seems like it's getting hotter. Amen. All the time. Amen. But I want you to know, amen, God's a keeping me. God's a sending me through the fire. And I know one thing about the fire. When I get thrown into the fire, I know what to do. I reach for the hem of his garment. I reach for his leg. And I say, oh, Lord, I'm not going to make it if you don't bring me out of this. I know who to go to. I know what to do in a time of need. And I know that I'll find mercy. I know that I'll find grace. And I know that there's not going to be a hair of my head that's going to be singed through this fire. I'm going to make it through it. Praise the Lord. My wife's went through a lot with cancer, but don't she look good? She don't look like a cancer patient to me, but she is. Hey, man, listen, God's taking her through everything. He's going to bring her through this, and you're not even going to know she ever had it. That's the kind of God that we serve. Hey, man, I know what God can do. Hey, man, listen, I know what people does. Hey, man, when they don't appreciate God. Hey, man, they don't appreciate what the Lord done for them. Hey, man, listen, if you really appreciate it, what he done on the cross, you get your backside in church where it belonged. Come on, Brother Jimmy, preach it. Thank you, I believe I will. Amen, listen, if you really appreciated him, amen, listen, like you ought to, amen, you wouldn't mourn over paying your tithes, but you say, Lord, I wish to goodness. If I had more, I'd give it today because this is 10%. Lord, if I was to get a million dollars, I'd give you 100,000 of it to start out with and then I'd give a love offering. Amen, that's the kind of attitude, amen, that we ought to have. I know this man here is one of the biggest giving people I ever knew. He don't have much money, but he gives a big part of what he does have. Amen, listen, freely he enjoys it. I always enjoyed it. Amen, listen, every time I got a lump sum, I couldn't wait to get to church. I'd pack that check, amen, just like I had a new baby or something. I wanted to present to the Lord, and I'd say, thank you, Lord. I get to write out this $2,000 check to the church today, and it feels good. Oh, Lord. Lord, I'm thankful I get to write this $5,000 check out to the church today. And Lord, if you give me more money, I'll write 10 next week if you give me. Amen. Whatever it is that I need. Amen. Whatever you want to let me have. Amen. If we really appreciate the Lord. If we really know what the potter's wheel is. If we're used to getting on the potter's wheel. Amen. Some folks have been on it once or twice in their life. Amen. I'm going to tell you, I've been on it lots of times. Amen, not because I don't have trouble lusting, I don't have trouble stealing or drinking or taking drugs, none of that kind of stuff, but every now and then I let stuff get to me. Every now and then I say, Lord, I'm just going to turn the church over to somebody else. I'm tired of dealing with this. The Lord had to spank me and tell me I called you. You're not going through what I went through on the cross. Shut up your mumbling and get back in there. And I have to say, oh, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I, I, I'm here uh, for duty today. I'm here, Lord, to do your work. If I have a church full or only a handful, if we have $10 in the offering plate or $10,000, i am going to serve you till I die because you're the only hope that I have. Help me, Lord, with my grumbling and my complaining. Well, Brother Jimmy, you ought not to grumble. You ought not to either. You ought to be humble enough to admit to it. I'm going to let all y'all get a blessing. How many grumblers we got in this place today? Praise the Lord. The rest of you, I hope you get to go to heaven with us one day after a while. Amen, because you didn't lift your hand, that means you lied. Amen, there ain't nobody in here. Don't grumble over everything or, or something. Amen, every day, who's just too hot to go to school? It's just too hot to go to work. Who don't like them people I'm working with? Well, when they don't, nobody appreciate nothing you're doing. I'll tell you what, I, I, you can't raise a tater in this place. Well, I, you pull grass and pull grass, and uh, it grows faster than I can pull it up. I pull up uh, all the grass in the field, it'd be two inches tall by morning. I, I can't get it all just grum, grum. Grumma, 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 grumma. Lord, how about these sweat bees? Lord, how about all these chiggers I'm having to fight? Lord, how about these ticks I'm having to pull off of me? Isn't it awful? Amen. But there was a curse put upon man in the Garden of Eden. Amen. Years ago, you better believe it's going to be hard. Amen. Because sin brought this upon us. Amen. Sin did. Oh, Brother Jimmy. 
I don't want to have to follow my husband. I, I don't want to have to be obedient to him. Then shut your mouth. Get under subjection to Christ. Amen. It was a curse that's put upon you. You're going to have to walk behind him. Amen. Listen, you're going to have to follow him. Amen. Listen, you're not supposed to lead him. Well, Brother Jimmy, he does things wrong. Amen. And quit messing up. Amen. Give him the reins and tell him to lead. You know how the best way I heard to teach somebody to swim? Get to a 10-foot hole of water and pick them up by the sea of the britches and a collar, shirt collar and give them a sling. Amen. Listen, be there to get them out if they do something stupid. But they have one thing about it. Amen. Listen, they say, amen, listen, that uh, uh, what is it? I was trying to think of what they said, that uh, invention mother, uh, uh, you see, uh, uh, some type of problem is a mother of invention. Amen. Yeah, necessity. I quoted that in Sunday school this morning. Necessity is a mother of invention. It'd be good if some people had some necessities, amen, where they had to trust in God. Amen, put your faith in your trust in God. The only real happiness is living for Jesus. The only real happiness in this world is knowing he's taking care of me and he'll get me through everything. Amen, that's coming in my life. Oh, I've been to the waiting room when the loved one was having surgery. I remember Jenny was down in Nashville and she was having surgery and if something happens to me, I get through it pretty good. You go mess with her, my world falls all around me. You go to messing with her. And she was they took her down the hallway and I said, Lord, I don't know if I can walk to the waiting room or not. I'm so broken. And I'm so concerned about her and I made it into the waiting room. There's one man sitting to my left and a lady way back there in that great big old waiting room right in the middle of COVID and nobody could go in. I said, Lord, there'd be a lot of people here to sit with me if they could come in, but they can't because of the restrictions. And the Lord said, I'm here. I'll be with you always to the end. And I said, Lord, be with her, help her, Lord. Give the doctors wisdom and knowledge to do the right thing. And the Lord gave me that vision about being in a fire. He said, I didn't keep Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from going through the fire, but when they got in the fire, I was already there waiting on them. And I stayed till after they come out. He said, I'll be with you through this fire also. He man, he, he has. And he's going to continue to be. Amen. Aren't you glad for the potter's wheel? Aren't you glad we can say, Lord, cleanse me with hyssop. Get my mind to thinking right. Get me, Lord, where I need to be. Put me back on the potter's wheel. Lord, I'm scarred. I'm broken. I've got flawed. I've been disfigured. I've been, Lord, just torn apart. I've been scratched. I've been hurt. Take these things out of me, Lord. Help me, Lord, to do what's right. Oh, God, get those lumps out. Help me, Lord, to do the right thing. Take that attitude out of me, Lord. Take these lips that I've got, this unclean, Lord, where I grumble and complain. Lord, take that, Lord, away from me and cleanse me, Lord, so that I'll be thankful for everything and help me, Lord, to learn to take chastisement. Oh, if we don't take chastisement, we have became bastards. That's what the Bible says. Amen. And, and see, the Lord, he, he shows his love through our chastisement, through the correction, through the getting spanked by the Word of God, through getting spanked by the Holy Spirit. And when we won't listen for a long period of time and the pastor has to hurt our feelings, that's a real good spanking. I remember getting a good spanking years ago when I first started. But you know, I had my mind on the Lord and my heart was given to him. And I remember I was had a preaching appointment, I hadn't been preaching too long, on a Thursday night. Brother Herman Richmond was my pastor and he gave me that appointment. I didn't study like I need to. I had one thing right after another seemed like it came up and I got tired and I got sleepy and I kept putting it off till the next night and finally... About Wednesday night, I didn't have time and come in on Thursday evening and everything going wrong and this, that, and that. I didn't have time to study like I needed to, so I got up at night. I read the scripture and I said, and the Lord said that, well, we're supposed to 
Well, God's good and couldn't get hold of a thing. Couldn't get nothing, just a blank. I couldn't tell you anything except I was there. And I looked to Brother Richmond and I said, Brother Richmond, I'm sorry. I'm going to turn it back over to you. I said, I don't seem to have anything tonight. So I went over and sat right down on the front row of that pew just like that. And I looked up Brother Richmond. He got up in the pool pit, that bald head and that little smirky grin he had. He pointed his finger right at me. He said, Brother Jimmy, if you'd have studied, son, God had gave you something. There's where you failed. Hey, man, it made me, oh, it hurt. It hurt so bad. Oh, I thought it would kill me. I thought I'd die. Then I got home, got to thinking on it, and got mad. Hey, man, I was kind of like Jonah, sitting under the gourd. Hey, man, done got mad. Lord, it wasn't right. He shouldn't have done that. Went to, I couldn't sleep hardly any of that night. Went to work the next day, and all I could think about is that bald head, them beady eyes are looking at me, calling my name out. With all them people that was there, we had a big crowd. Back at that time, Christians went to church on midweek service. <laughs> Amen. But, but anyway, had a big crowd that night, and, you know, I, I, they always like to kill me, so I decided I'm going to, at break time, I'm going to go pray for him. The Lord to straighten him out. That's where he was wrong. So I went in what they called the cold room, and I got in behind some stuff. Nobody could see me. During break time, got on my hands and knees. I went to praying for that old preacher. And finally the Lord said, you're praying for the wrong hypocrite. You're the one that's doing wrong, not him. And I said, Lord, I ain't going back there no more. I'll never go back there no more. And the Lord said, you don't go back. I'll take your anointing away from you. I sent you there to learn. I sent you there to grow. You need to repent and go back and tell him how much you love him. You done him wrong by not being prayed up and studied up and him loving you enough to give you an appointment. You need to go apologize and hug him. So I did on Sunday morning. I went up to him, tears in my eyes, and I said, I love you, Brother Richmond. I'm sorry. You correct me whenever I need to be corrected. That's why God sent me here. And you know what? Everywhere that old man went, I went to. He'd go visiting. I'd get in the car and go with him. Amen. And no matter what happened, I was right there with that man till he left. And we got another pastor, Brother James Wheeler, and I was right there with him too. Amen. He was a really good pastor too. And I stayed with him. Amen. We were good friends and really close until the Lord called me out to pastor my own church. But I had to take a good whooping before I could ever amount to anything. And we got a whole lot of people that goes to church needs a real good whooping but they're not man enough and woman enough to take one. They don't have enough love and respect for God. They don't appreciate him for what he is and what he did. Lord, help me. Amen. Seems like the better I preach, the more I trouble I get in. Amen. To listen, uh, folks, the Lord wants us, uh, amen, to amen, uh, grow and to move forwards. Uh, he wants us back to the potter's wheel. Uh, he wants us to receive that mercy and receive that forgiveness. And he wants us to make us all over again, brand new, a new creature in Christ Jesus. Now, I'm going to stop here in just a moment. I'm going to say just a few more things, and we're going to close. Here in verse number 12 of Psalms 51, it says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. I looked up the word free spirit, and it says, A soul willingly conform to God's law. He would be preserved in a right of course of conduct. Woo! Lord, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Give me, Lord, what I had the day I got saved. Give me, Lord, what I had from the very beginning. Help me, Lord, to do my works. First works over. And let me receive mercy and forgiveness because, Lord, I failed you. I took three or four steps backwards instead of going forwards. We've got to have a determination. If you can let every little thing get in your way, there's something wrong. You've got to keep pressing on. Heartaches for Brother Jimmy. You don't know what always happened in my life. I just thank God you ain't been in mine. Amen. 
Amen. I've been through some things too. The difference is you laid down and tuck it and I stood up and fought. Amen. The difference is you laid down and wallowed in despair and ran from the devil. And I looked him in the eye and said, shut your mouth. I'm going to the house of God. Amen. I hurt my knee and the devil said, you won't be able to preach tomorrow. I said, watch me. I will. I'll stand up and preach. I'll sit in a chair. Or I'll lay down on the platform up there and look like a beached walrus or a beached whale, one or the other. Lay on my side. If I have to, give me a microphone and I'm going to preach. And shut your mouth and get out of my way. I'm going to the house of God and I will do what God called me. If I've got life, if I've got breath, I'll do what thus saith the word of God. And I did. And you know what? It got better every day. Amen. I believe if I'd stayed home and babied that thing, I'd been out of church for a month whining about it. Probably had to have surgery on it. Look at that thing right there. Why, well, I could well, I can do the two-step today. Amen. That's what God will do for you. He's my healer. He's my deliverer. But you got to press on. You got to go back to the potter's wheel. You got to say, oh God, give me strength. Help me, Lord, not to complain. Help me, Lord, not to give up. But let me press on and do the right thing. And let everybody know that I've got what I told them I had. Amen. When you say, I got Jesus, he's the best thing ever happened to me. Help me, Lord, to back it up with my, back my words up with my actions. Help me, Lord, do this. Let's go. Amen. That's what a lot of people's got to do. You're not going to ever make it. If you don't do that, ain't nobody else going to do that to you. You're the only ones big enough to do it. You're going to have to get yourself by the seed of the breeches and jerk yourself in order and get up to the potter's wheel and say, Lord, fix me. Lord, repair me. Lord, mend me. Take out, Lord, what you don't want. Now, you might not like his preaching today, but I love it. Amen. You might not like it today, but I need it. You might not like it today, but this is what I survive on. This is what I thrive after. This is what I want. Give me the infallible word of God. Give me all of it or don't give me nothing. I want all of it. Bless his name. Praise the Lord. Jesus loves you today. You're precious. Would you stand with me while we say goodbye to the TV and radio folks, live streaming folks, please consider sharing this on your timeline today if you're watching by live streaming. God bless you and good day.